let me show you something. Here's a simple sign up form that I built using clean and simple HTML semantics. It looks great. The error messages appear exactly where they should, right after you hit the submit button. Perfect if you are a visual user. But what if you rely on a screen reader? What if you can't see the error messages? Will the screen reader announce what went wrong? Will it guide the user and help them recover? Semantic HTML alone can't do that. Now imagine an e-commerce site. You're browsing through the products. And when you're tapping through the list of buttons, all you hear is buy again and again. No product name, no context, just buy. Frustrating, right? That's where ARIA comes in. It gives your HTML a voice, a way to describe itself to a screen reader user. ARIA lets you say that this button buys an iPhone 16. This alert needs your attention and this dropdown is open or in the closed state. Today, we are unpacking ARIA. What it is, why it matters, and how to use it without breaking accessibility. By the end of this video, you will not only understand ARIA, you will be ready to test it, implement it, and make the web truly inclusive. But before we dive in, please like this video and share this video with your friends and colleagues. VARIA stands for Web Accessibility Initiative. Accessible Rich Internet Applications. It's not a coding language, but a specification by W3C to help assistive technologies like screen readers understand the dynamic content and custom UI components. Think of it as adding subtitles to your UI because visual users can see your buttons, drop downs. But what about screen readers? They need you to explicitly call out what's going on. To better understand ARIA, we must discuss about the accessibility tree. When your browser loads a website, it does not just see the HTML. It creates something called as DOM or document object model. And that's how a browser understands the structure of the page. But screen readers, they don't read directly from the DOM. Instead, browser creates another model called the accessibility tree. Think of it as a filtered but much simpler version of your website, specifically built for assistive technologies. It includes what's important, name, role, and value of an element. Important thing to note here is that accessibility tree is built based on your HTML and the ARIA attributes that you provided and not on the CSS. So if you don't use proper HTML, if your labels are not connected, and if your dynamic content is not announced, then the accessibility tree becomes incomplete or worse, misleading. That means screen readers cannot interpret what's happening and your users, they are left in the dark. ARIA is not a magic fix for your broken code, but when used right, it gives your HTML a voice, a way to explain itself to a screen reader through name, role, state property, relationships, and live regions. Let's explore each one with simple and relatable examples. Like you and I have names, every element rendered in your DOM should have a name. The accessible name is what assistive technology announces. It tells the user what this element is in simple words. So if you have a buy button on a product card, to a sighted user, buy is absolutely fine. They can see the iPhone next to it. But what about a screen reader user? Without ARIA label, it just says buy, and that's all. But when you use ARIA label buy iPhone 16, it provides additional context for a screen reader user to better understand what they are about to buy. Fascinating, right? Here are three simple ways to give your button an accessible name. Use clear button text, which is quite challenging to maintain the aesthetics of an application. Secondly, use ARIA labels. Give button ARIA label by iPhone 16. And third is ARIA labeled by. You pass the ID of another visible text on the page. 
Here's what you need to remember about ARIA label. It contains the actual text a screen reader will announce. It is invisible. Users will not see it on the screen. And it replaces the visible text and not add on to it. So if you go back to our previous example, when you give ARIA label by iPhone 16, it will announce by iPhone 16 and not just by. And the biggest mistake with ARIA label, developers are still stuffing the words like click, link, button, drop down. A screen reader informs the users about the element type. So you don't have to say it again in the ARIA label. Want to know which elements support ARIA label well and which does not? Drop a comment saying support for ARIA label and I will send you the full list of good versus bad use cases. Also, I have a full video explaining the differences between ARIA label and ARIA labeled by. Link is in the description below. The role tells assistive technology what this element does. Is it a button, a link or a drop down? For example, when you are building a button and not using the button tag, but a div with the role button, even though you are using a div, ARIA tells the screen reader that this is a button and now your screen reader lets the user know how to interact with it. Put it in the comment on why we should not use the ARIA roles when semantic HTML tags are available. Next, we have states. ARIA states describe whether something is selected, disabled, expanded, and much more. For example, you have a button with the ARIA expanded false. Think of it like your collapsible FAQ section. And when you click on it, you are toggling the ARIA expanded to true. In that case, screen reader will announce button, what is your return policy expanded or collapsed depending upon the state of your FAQ. It's like giving your users the right state of an element. ARIA properties add context about the element. They don't change anything, they just describe it. For example, when you add ARIA required equals to true to an input type for first name, it will inform a screen reader and say a first name star added is required. And that's crucial information, especially when it comes to forms. Other useful properties include ARIA has pop-up menu. It tells if clicking will open up a menu or not. ARIA described by, it connects an input to the other visible element on the page. ARIA relationships links one element that belongs to another, even if they are not next to each other in the DOM. We can take an example of ARIA described by, where we are passing the ID of another visual element on the page. So, to a screen reader user, this input now becomes the context. And it will announce email address, edit text, we will never share your email. But without ARIA described by, they would miss that reassurance. Next is what most of the developers struggle with, ARIA live regions. They let the screen reader know when something dynamically changes or updates. It does not need focus, it does not need user interaction, it just gets announced. So when you are using a div with ARIA Live Polite, it will announce the changes happening dynamically, even if the user focus is somewhere else. You can use ARIA Live Polite for non-urgent updates or ARIA Live Assertive for high priority alerts. I have two very interesting videos explaining both ARIA Live and role alert in details. Do watch that video after this one. Link is in the description below. When used responsibly, ARIA bridges the gap between visual interface and assistive technologies. It helps us build digital experiences that works for everyone. So as you write your next line of code, ask yourself, how will this sound? Because if it's not announced, it might not exist. Now, if you visit the official ARIA spec site, you will see a massive list of attributes, roles, and states. And while all of it's valuable, it's overwhelming. But my job is to save you time because time is money, my friend. 
So instead of throwing the dictionary at you, let's break down the most commonly used ARIA roles and attributes. Grouped into five practical buckets that you can actually use. Let's make this simple. At number one, we have landmark roles. For page structure and navigation, use role banner always at the top of the page. Role navigation for nav bars. And remember to add ARIA labels to provide an accessible name in case you're having more than one role navigation. Use role main for all your primary content. Use role complementary for a side or use role content info for your footer. And here's the quick table for the HTML equivalents that you must use before using ARIA attributes. And here are the best practices for you. Use native HTML tags whenever possible. They are recognized automatically by screen readers without additional ARIA roles. Only use ARIA roles when you are unable to use native HTML elements or need to override the default role for a custom component. And lastly, provide accessible names using ARIA label or ARIA labeled by. If the region is not clearly described visually, especially for multiple navigations or a site sections. Comment HTML semantics to get a word file for this table. Next, we have widget roles. And these are used when building custom UI controls. Common widget roles are role button, role checkbox, role dialog, role combo box or role tab list in combination with role tab and tab panel. With these, remember to pair with ARIA states like ARIA selected, ARIA expanded or ARIA checked. And next, we have live region attributes when the content updates dynamically. In such situations, use role alert or ARIA live polite or assertive. Watch my video on how to implement ARIA live and role alert in the right way. I'll put the link in the descriptions below. Next, we have relationship attributes. It defines how elements relate to one another. Use ARIA labeled by, ARIA described by, ARIA owns or ARIA controls. So for example, when you're using ARIA described by email help, a screen reader will read the inputs label plus the helpful description. Next, we have state and property attributes to express the dynamic behaviors. So we have ARIA expanded, ARIA pressed or ARIA hidden. And we have ARIA selected, ARIA disabled, and ARIA current. All of these are most commonly used attributes. Use these to keep users informed about what's interactive or active. So here's the big question. When to use and not to use ARIA? And as they say, give someone a hammer, they will try to hammer everything. And this is where you need to be smart about ARIA and refer to the following rules. Rule number one, native HTML first. Use button instead of a div with role button. Don't override accessibility. If something is already accessible, don't mess it up with ARIA. It's commonly seen with select dropdowns. And rule number three, ARIA does not add functionality. It describes what's already there. You still need keyboard support in your JavaScript. All right, you followed the best practices for ARIA. You used ARIA thoughtfully, but here's the real question. Did you test it right? Because even the most accessible looking UI can break silently for assistive technology users. Use this checklist to uncover every ARIA related issue before your users do. Test with the screen reader. Use VoiceOver for Mac, NVDA or JAWS for Windows. Navigate using arrow keys. Is it making sense? Use accessibility tree. Inspect element in your Chrome dev tools. Go to accessibility pane. See if the right name, role, and value is present or not. Use tools like Andy and X dev tools. And lastly, try pausing and reading out loud. Would a blind user understand the structure? If not, go back and fix it. Again, ARIA is not a fix for bad code. Use it wisely, test it thoroughly, and always design with inclusion in mind. Because accessibility is not the extra work, 
It's what makes the web work for everyone. Like this video, share this with your developer or designer. Drop a comment what's the most confusing part of ARIA for you. And subscribe for real world accessibility content. And if you are testing Lovable, Bolt, or Cursor for accessibility, go check out my latest AI face off video. You will be surprised what we found. This is Param Singh signing off.